my God, why have you abandoned me? No words of Jesus bother me as much as these words spoken from the cross. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? If Jesus, the Son of God, God himself, felt abandoned in his life, what makes any of us think that we will be spared those same feelings of abandonment when we too face our own way of the cross. We are entering into the great mystery of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, a week which we call holy, in which each of us is invited to look into our own lives during this week, to look into how we too have to die in order to rise. That that same road that our Lord traveled, a painful road where he was scourged, mocked, where he was betrayed, he spat upon, is a road that all of us travel so often. And we feel abandoned like Jesus did. We feel like we are alone. When you face your own situations in life, when you face a situation where your life is troubled with your marriage, where you face a situation where your life is troubled with your children, you face a situation where your life is troubled because of a sickness or disease and you feel like you're alone, like you won't be able to make it. Maybe this is where you find yourself at at this point in your life before this Holy Week facing all sorts of situations which each and every one of us faces. Whenever somebody comes to me and they say, Father Adam, I suffer. I have so many problems. I say to them what I want to say to each of you here tonight. Welcome to the club. We all suffer. And some of you think, well, there are other people who have bigger problems than me. And yet, your problem is the biggest problem in the world. And you know why? Because it is your problem. That is why it is the biggest problem in the world. Because it is your problem. I'm thinking right now of real situations where we feel abandoned. Just this week, I met a young girl who asked me, why is it that her mom can't get well? Her mom a year ago had a stroke and now she's paralyzed. Father, I want my mom to get well. I want our life to go back to the way it was a year ago. She feels abandoned. 
Why won't God help me? So many of us face those same situations when you're diagnosed with cancer or when someone in your life dies or worse yet commits suicide or when you find out your kid is addicted to drugs you enter into a deep state of desperation what's going to happen when you face your depression or your anxiety or your addictions what will happen in my life are you out there God in other words If you really love me, why do I have to go through this? If you are the loving God, my loving Father, why would you allow me to go through this? Take it away from me. We do the same thing our Lord did. Let this cup pass from me. I don't want this suffering, this problem. And you know, Ask yourself this question. If God allowed His Son, His only Son, His beloved Son, Jesus, to go through this terrible way of the cross, this terrible suffering, what makes any of us think that He's going to come and take us off of our cross? If God did not come and take His Son off the cross, why do you think He's going to take you off of yours. That's why Jesus said, unless you take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of me. Take up your cross and follow me. And the only way we can do that is to realize that it is through the cross that we come into the resurrection that the cross for us is the gate to life. The cross is the gate to life. That this life is not going to be all happiness. I'm reminded of the time when I was invited to dinner at a family's home. And it was little Jimmy's turn to say the grace and he, everybody bows their head and little Jimmy is praying and he's saying as is usual thank you God for my mommy my daddy my brother my sister my grandma my grandpa my gerbil and then he began to thank God in deep prayer for the food thank you God for the turkey the stuffing the mashed potatoes and the chocolate cake and ice cream that we're going to have for dessert and all of a sudden as soon as he said chocolate cake and ice cream there was this big pause and we're all waiting to see what's going to happen and Jimmy lifts his head and says mommy if I thank God for the Brussels sprouts and broccoli, won't God know that I'm lying? <laughs> Aren't we like that in our own life? It's easy to follow the Lord when you have chocolate cake and ice cream. But you know that, you know from your own experience that life isn't just chocolate cake and ice cream. There's plenty of Brussels sprouts. Oh yes, plenty of Swiss chard and bitter, bitter herbs to go along with it, isn't there? And yet we are called to be thankful always to the Lord, always. The Bible says if I thank God for the good things, why won't I thank God for the bad things? For all things work for the good for those who love God and follow Him. 
God loved his son Jesus, didn't he? Of course he did. He was his beloved son and he allowed him to go through the way of the cross. Why? Because it was good for him. Because at the end was the resurrection. It was good for Jesus. Through the passion and his death came the glory of the resurrection for you and me. Jesus' way of the cross was good. It wasn't bad. And your own broccoli and Brussels sprouts are good for you, even though you may not realize they are good for you. But what you are asked to do is to trust. See, our, our faith is not about believing. Anybody can believe. Even the devil believes. The devil is a great believer. He knows the creed better than you or me. But what the devil doesn't have is faith. Because faith is based on trust. That I trust the Lord. Not just in the good times, but also in the bad times. When it's not easy that I trust him. My God, why have you abandoned me? Even though you feel like that so often, don't you? Of course you do. But let me call your attention to something. Jesus felt like that too. But what did Jesus say? Did he say on that cross, God, why have you abandoned me? No. What did he say? He said, my God, why have you abandoned me? He didn't say, God, why have you abandoned me? He said, my God, why have you abandoned me? Because even though I feel that way, you are still my God. You are still mine. And that means I am yours. And that means you still are with me. And if you're still with me, it's all going to be fine one way or another if I trust you. So even though I have these feelings, I still trust you because you are my God. And it will all be fine. I know it. Even though I'm, I'm filled with fear and anxiety, you are my God. And before Jesus entered into his passion, before he entered into the mystery of his death, he celebrated what we are about to celebrate now. He celebrated Mass, the first Mass, with those he loved. And the Bible we just read said, in the Gospel of Mark that Jesus took that bread into his hands blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you this is my body given for you broken for you now the Bible teaches us that we are the body of Christ. You and I are the body of Christ. We are here to receive what we are called to become. We receive the body of Jesus. The priest takes the place of Jesus at the altar. He is the altur Christus, the other Christ. And so it's Jesus himself who celebrates Mass for us here. And when I take that bread in my hands, I do the same thing Jesus did. I take it, I bless it, I break it, right, later, and I give it and say, take this, all of you, this is my body. Now, before he turns the bread into his body, he does what to it? He breaks it, doesn't he? He breaks it. Now you are the body of Christ. You're broken. Now you understand why you got issues? Now you understand why you have problems? 
You are the body of Christ, broken. You are broken. And yet, as broken as we are, and each one of us is, we've all got issues. You know, we're all sinners here. The Bible says, all men have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us are sinners. Mm -hmm. All of us. Don't be like the person who comes to me and says, I don't know why you talk so much about going to confession. I don't have any sins. I always say, well, then let's take the statue of Mary down and put you up there. <laughs> we all have sins. All of us. And as broken as we are, what does he do with the broken body? What does Jesus do with the broken bread? He blesses it. He blesses it. What does the word blessing mean? He fills it with joy. Blessing, whenever you say to someone, God bless you, what are you saying? I want you to be a joy-filled person. I want you to have joy in your life. Because when you say, God bless you, you're saying, I want you to have joy. I want you to have God in your life, which brings joy in your life. So God bless you. He blessed it before he broke it. So you are broken but blessed. And where is the source of your blessing? Where is the source of your joy? Where is it? What does he do before he blesses it and before he breaks it? He takes it into his hands. See, you may be broken, but you are blessed. Why? Because you are in his hands. That's where Jesus said, my God, because I'm his. My God, you are in his hands. You may feel abandoned. You may have cancer flowing through your body. Your marriage may be falling apart. You may have all sorts of addictions. You may just have been diagnosed with a disease. You may be depressed. You may have all sorts of stuff. You may be underemployed or you may not have a job. You can't pay your bills. All problems with your children, whatever is going on in your life. But you are still blessed, even though you are broken, because you are the body of Christ in his hands.